Hi, and welcome everybody to The Butter Dish. We have John Chintala with us today. He has been a wonderful group member in the Steak and Butter Gang, and we have continued to be inspired by his responses and his description of his journey in the carnivore life. Uh, we noticed John right away, uh, even before the January challenge began, because he was just so enthusiastic and encouraging in our chats. And so he got our attention immediately, and we've gotten to know him more throughout the, as the weeks have gone on. And so we just wanted to get a chance to learn a little bit more about his journey and share it with you all. So welcome. Welcome, John. Welcome, John. Thanks. Thanks, Emily. Welcome. Thanks, uh, Eric. Welcome. It feels, uh, it feels, it feels different seeing you guys in, in this, uh, in this side of, uh, social media versus like in the steak and butter group. Yeah. I imagine. That's yeah. right. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cozy, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Small groups. Yeah. So we're super excited to hear all about you and your journey. So why don't we start there? Why don't you just give us a little bit of background of your carnivore journey thus far? Like most people who are with carnivore, uh, I started off my carnivore journey pretty much uh, at, a, at, a, at a loss, not knowing what to do next, mm -hmm. right? So I, I did everything I could. I was, uh, I was told, I was by every structure around me that it's calories in, calories out, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it was reinforced. It was bashed into my head. It was like every show there was, biggest loser. Everything was calories in, calories out, calories in, calories out. Uh, no one ever spoke about the hormonal aspect of mm. how weight is kept, how weight is created. And there was so much focus on weight and there was no focus on the science behind the weight and what imbalance causes weight. Uh, so what really helped me there was uh, Dr. Eric Berg and Dr. Jason Funk and following them on like YouTube. I understood that weight is not uh, the end product. It is the byproduct of a hormonal issue. So it's it's not you don't attack weight you attack the 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 root causes of it and it and and it took me a, a couple of months to figure those things out for myself. I was three hundred and ninety five pounds when I when I started doing this research. Uh, at that point in time, I was I was uh, it was getting hard for me to find clothes. I was only shopping in specialty stores that had like big and tall stores. And and I'm from Chicago, like uh, like what Cherish knows. Uh, uh, we don't we don't we don't down anybody for their weight. We celebrate people in all sizes and shapes, as we do in most America, and are almost it's getting to a place where in most of the Western world we do that. It's good that we do that, but but what happened in my case was it kept me for a long time from investigating what was going on with me because it made me feel as in from the ex from external sources that it was okay to be 395 pounds as long mm -hmm. as I had a smile on my face mm -hmm. right as long as my life was good as long as I had a functioning job I was high functioning so I realized that there was no difference between a high functioning alcoholic or a high functioning drug addict or a high functioning uh, hormonally imbalanced therefore metabolically metabolically compromised person so mm -hmm. i realized very quickly that this was a this was an epidemic for me this was an issue for me i can't solve it for everybody but i can solve it for myself so i quickly cut out uh, a lot of the processed foods i stuck to the formula 50 grams or 50 grams of carbohydrates a lot of fat i did that for about uh, six months lost about 70 pounds so i went to about 325 pounds right away from 395 pounds and wow. without any like stretch marks without any like hair fall without any like because uh, I had done the research before before just going and like following it the, I think the first part was because I started questioning everything around me doing the research beforehand really helped me to get to the place safely that I was getting to so so 325 pounds then I added intermittent fasting because because Dr. Berg and Dr. Funk have been big proponents of that. Uh, I had intermittent fasting. Uh, and then that just like rocketed it for me because that just like I, I was down to 250 pounds within like a year and a half. Also, I had lost wow. almost 145 pounds. I was eating a lot of meat because you can't avoid meat or you can't avoid meat products if you're if you want to stay if you want to be in a healthy ketogenic diet. You can't avoid healthy meat. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know that then. Mm -hmm. I was eating a lot of sausages. I was eating a lot of prosciutto. I was eating a lot of like uh, not optimal meat, I would say. I was eating more tilapia. Catfish is okay, a little bit of fat. I was eating a lot of different kinds of things that were not necessarily, uh, I would say, what are optimal in the carnivore 
community now, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was doing okay though because of it was it's all gradation. Of it's course. how unhealthy I was. Oh yeah. And I was I I and how what 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 true optimal health is. I was getting there in steps without even knowing it, mm-hmm. right? I think the one thing that I did that I can share with our people, people who are like you know trying to like better mm-hmm. their life through food and nutrition is if you settle into the next step don't settle but keep questioning mm-hmm. keep questioning and then keep questioning and can keep questioning and it's not just about food i think it's myopic to think about carnivore lifestyle as just food it's yeah. it's everything it's everything that goes into it optimization uh, oh my goodness i love yeah. it and i think yeah. that that's uh i we just see that all the time people that are coming to carnivore they are people that are actually already quite committed to their health. They usually have done something. They have found some kind of a resource and they have had huge health gain, health gains from say the standard American diet or something like that. Yeah. And so, but um, optimization can be addicting and I don't mean in a bad way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when we figure out like a really calm, steady way, you know, there's absolutely this kind of striving mindset that I've, I've learned to really let go of and release. Yeah. Um, but I love, I love the word optimization. I was even thinking about that when we talk about maintenance or something like that, like maintenance isn't really a thing, but optimization is a thing that, you know, can like always be a part of the journey. And I think if you listen to your body as well, if you listen to your body, you, you're actually, it's telling you when, you know, I, you can do better or, you know, there is something we can fix because it's getting stronger and maybe you know if you listen to that you know you'll you will actually choose better things or try some, mm-hmm. something else yeah. so so I, I was i was doing pretty good my weight was coming off my weight was coming off healthily mm-hmm. i was sleeping better i had a very difficult time sleeping before i still have two cpap machines my god i remember it i had cpap <laughs> machines because at night i needed the mask to sleep mm-hmm. because i wasn't getting enough oxygen at the end and 95 pounds right mm-hmm. I, I, I stopped snoring. I stopped like, uh, I stopped needing anything to sleep. My sleep quality was pretty good. I had no GERD anymore. No, like mm-hmm. all of that stuff was healing, right? And I, I knew that it was all related to diet and lifestyle. Uh, so I thought, you know what? I am going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to research further because not that I was not getting results, but I was getting to a point where it felt to me that my life was occupied by chronometer, uh, zero, mm-hmm. how many hours to my next fast, how much, how many, uh, how many calories are in this, how many like percentages fat and how much time I spent shopping, how much time I spent on Thrive, on the app. And I was like, I was, I, I, I remember this. I remember Dr. Berg and Dr. Funk would keep saying, they would keep giving examples of like, what was man like? When I say man, woman, I mean, what was ancient human like, right? Yes. And, and, and not to lose some of that. And I thought to myself, what if I didn't have an app? What if I didn't have, what if I didn't? <laughs> and then I started researching when calories came about. Calories only came about less than 100, 200 years ago, 150 years ago, right? Wow. And the, and the experiments that led to creating calories are total BS. Yes. I'm, I'm, yeah, it's like... It's, it's, it's basically what they do is, I'll give you a good example. They'll take, they'll, for example, they'll take a candle and they'll, mm-hmm. uh, they'll see how long the candle <laughs> takes to burn and they'll measure yeah. how much energy was emitted out. It's like, that's not how the body works at all. No. 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 So, I, I mean, at, the, at that point in time, I was, I was eating uh, a three pound bag of kale raw <sighs> with, with the raw Emmentaler like cheese or like raw, like Gouda, like, no, not Gouda, Gouda's aged, right? But raw Emmentaler is always a raw milk cheese, a raw, raw milk cheese and a three pound bag of kale. That was my go-to meal. Uh, oh, and it was, it was working beautifully. Uh, but then I started realizing there's a lot of work that's going behind it. I wonder if I'm missing something. Mm-hmm. So when I started thinking along those lines uh, very quickly, and this tells you that YouTube's algorithm works something popped up in front of me saying carnivore diet okay. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even realize it. based on my based on my searches it suggested carnivore diet right, right. and who was it who popped up yes there? uh it was it was dr sean baker right hmm. yeah but i looked at what he was talking about though he said you don't need meat i'm sorry you hmm. all, all you need is meat. you don't need anything else and then he said the word carnivore hmm. i was like oh i didn't know this was a thing so then mm-hmm. I researched a carnivore diet and that quickly brought me to 
uh, Dr. Saladino, Armstrong mm -hmm. Fisters. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, that's 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 where I started learning. And that girl, my God, the PhD, the older of the Armstrong Sisters, mm -hmm. it was her because because she's an engineer. I'm an engineer. We're like oh, we, okay. the way she talked about it, the way she I could quickly connect with how she was explaining it. You bet. And she and she was doing it while being in a rural part of Illinois. Her mom ran a restaurant, <laughs> and her, and her, and and they both worked out. I I used to work out a lot when mm. I was 395 pounds. I was deadlifting 450 pounds. I was I was a buff dude. I would like uh, I was what I didn't know at the time was because I was lifting so heavy and doing such heavy workouts, my adrenals were completely shot. Yes. Yeah. I did. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just calories and calories out way back then. So, mm -hmm. so this these two sisters and Dr. Salad, you know, like they they really helped me connect all the dots. Like, why mm -hmm. do the French eat what they eat? Oh, because it's saturated fat. Saturated mm -hmm. fat is good for you. It is poofers and moofers, like you know, monounsaturated, mm -hmm. polyunsaturated. Why not so bad? There's a lot of things I started learning from them, and it, mm -hmm. then it was very quick after that. After that, it, I, I I was eating liver, and uh, I was eating liver in butter with sauerkraut. That mm -hmm. was my meal with raw sauerkraut. That was my one meal a day. I was eating a pound of liver and 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 a, and and a half a pound of raw sauerkraut, and I felt so good. In four weeks, I lost two hundred. I came down from two fifty to two thirty five pounds. So wow. my body wanted that. Mm -hmm. Right yes. now that I look at it, it's bad because that's not how you eat it. You don't eat so much liver at once every day. Sure. Right. But back. That's what my body was missing. It was missing all the nutrients, yes. micronutrients at that time, mm -hmm. which I got. And then quickly, within four weeks, 15 pounds dropped. And more importantly, like all my water retention, everything, I was so like lean. So mm -hmm. I, I still remember like uh, it, it was it was so good. It was scary. So that was, <laughs> that was my first that was my first transition to uh, to carnivory. This was, when was that, John? This was, I actually was looking at the pictures yesterday. This was three years ago. Great. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, you were early. Ago. That was kind of before were it was had really taken this? off. Yeah, yeah. Were you doing this all by yourself this whole time until you joined our group? Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, so so I started then, but mm -hmm. I stopped kind of okay. then. Okay. I did, it, I did it for a month and I was living in a condo in Chicago. I had just completed a divorce. Uh, there was my, my son, we, we, we were, we, we had joint custody and everything, but I was going through other things in life, mm -hmm. which, which was, which were great. Nothing wrong with them. Nothing That's wrong right. with them. I, I'm more part of my ex-wife because she actually introduced me to, uh, Diane San Filippo and mm -hmm. a podcast that she runs called Chew the Fat, mm -hmm. which talks about eating the sure. meat. Sure. Sure. Right? Oh yeah. A fantastic podcast. Uh, so she actually was the one who did initial research on keto. Uh, nice. uh, my ex-wife, wow. and then she, I started, I started working off of that and building my own story. But the point I'm trying to make is, I was already isolated, mm -hmm. right? I was living by myself in my own condo, and eating meat only once a day by myself gave me such freedom and such liberty that I wasn't ready for it. I mm -hmm. felt. What I, this is, I remember very distinctly, October 2019, I felt like, I really felt like asking myself, what is the purpose of life? Not in a suicidal way, not in like suicidal ideation or anything, but more like this. I, I felt, what I felt was all the disillusionment around me was mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. And I felt naked, even if I had clothes on, I felt like, what are you guys doing? What are each of mm -hmm. you doing? Yes. What is all this? What is a building? What is, yeah. what is a car? It just mm -hmm. all felt so weird to me. I wanted to go away into nature. That's what I wanted to do yes. then. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't, and I knew then that, that, I knew then that even though the thought may be true, philosophically speaking, that I wasn't ready for it mm -hmm. at that yeah. point in time. I knew then, mm -hmm. so so I had quickly come back to keto. So that, makes that, sense. Yeah, that, that was 235, October 19th, yeah. And then October, oh, sorry, October 2019, uh, then within a few months, the pandemic hit. Uh, I completely lost the plot because mm -hmm. I feed off of like human energy. Yes. Right? <laughs> Is one of my fuels along with ketones. It's it's a fuel for me. me so too. a sense of community, mm -hmm. a sense of being 
the other ones that was taken uh, away from me because of the quarantine uh, was necessary was what it was but yeah. because once that went away and we all became zoomers <laughs> uh it was it was very difficult not to overeat mm-hmm. but most importantly it is very difficult not to keep my stress hormones under control yes because no matter how clean i was eating i was feeling stressed inside i was feeling empty inside i was mm-hmm. like my my cortisol was out of whack i could tell my adrenals were again starting to feel this way and i knew all of that was getting into a point where now i had hit 265 pounds by mm-hmm. uh I I'd, I'd gone back up 30 around uh Thanksgiving of uh last year so mm-hmm. November uh, November December of 2021 and I knew carnivore worked for me before mm-hmm. and I and and this is how I misutilized it I knew that carnivore was always going to be a tool for me so mm. I kept eating bad food Oh you can just uh, use that tool later I, Yeah, yeah yeah so so yeah yeah so mm-hmm. that's what I was doing in in December and November of last two months ago I was doing yeah. this to myself I was, I was thinking like I'm just going to load up I'm going to get like 300 pounds and then I'm going to start because I know carnivore is going to take care of it for me. Oh, what's his name? Uh Goggins uh Sure, David Goggins. Uh, David Goggins, I saw him. Mm-hmm. I saw one of his like motivational videos and I was like fuck this. I'm not eating. I'm not eating until I'm 300 pounds. <laughs> I'm going to start now because David Goggins can do that. He can be like, okay, get up, start. <laughs> so That's right. I, I, yeah, that got me on December 1st into PSMF, Protein Sparing Modified oh, Fast. Oh, interesting. Wow. Yeah. So, so I did that. And, and it is so, for me, it was it was dangerous because because i could tell that there was a lot of like oxalate dumping starting very quickly because yep. there's no fat and i could tell that uh i could tell that i was weak and i wasn't getting yeah. good sleep oh. and I, i was getting more protein in my urine i could tell you can tell by the smell like i don't know if you guys know or not i don't mm-hmm. know if it's a male female mm-hmm. thing but i could tell that i was getting way more protein because it's a lot reliant on egg whites chicken mm-hmm. white fish and i i was like i tried it for three or four weeks but i was getting really good knowledge because even there i was following doctors who were talking about the physiology of it and the science sure. of it right <clears throat> okay. and it's the first time i heard about the essential amino acids yes mm-hmm. and where they're available and they showed this chart yep and the and the first 10 things in that chart are like meat fish yes. beef lamb And then Absolutely. I was like, "Why are we doing egg whites and and chicken?" <laughs> like I, 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 I got so confused. Like that was it. I stopped. Mm-hmm. I stopped that. I, I I knew steak and butter girl because I was watching a lot of different content. Mm-hmm. I knew she and Dr. Barry uh, were like uh, they're not even big proponents. They just followed it and they won. Yeah. They 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 followed what they thought would work for them. Yes. And it's showing in their lives, right? So so I thought I'm just going to try that. Now I know that all the essential amino acids, all the highest nutrients per gram, they're all in these foods. I'm going to eat those foods only. Mm-hmm. Right? They're and optimal then, food. They're yeah. completely, if you want to talk about optimization, when you look at how everything's supposed to be balanced, that they, they, these are the foods, these meaty foods are the foods that have the correct balance. They, they're not breaking these amino acids apart and just taking like glycine by itself or taking this by itself yes. or that by itself. Yeah. They're all in the yeah. correct amount. And so that's why it's optimal. So that's, that's and also fantastic. they eat each other. If you miss one, you, you won't, you won't absorb the others as well. So that's, that's, oh, that's what got me it's taken by a steak and butter group because I saw one ad, uh, not, not an ad, but one notification on steak and butter YouTube channel, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Bella's YouTube channel. I saw one ad and, And I was like, okay, there's a group apparently. I'm going to join the group. Oh. I joined the group and uh, I loved it because the sense of community that I need was there. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I honestly, like Cherish reached out to me first. I didn't know if Cherish, I, I have been in groups before where people are trying to like get you to buy gift cards or like right. trying to like, you know, trying to, trying to get money from me. I'm like, I, why is somebody reaching out to me without me reaching out to them? I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. yes so cherish reached out to you yeah go ahead yeah so, <laughs> uh, 
Cherish reached out to me. I think Johnny was the person, Cherish as well. Like both of you talked about like joining the group, like joining the challenge. I said, mm-hmm. I'm late for the December challenge. I'll join in January. I have never been a big fan of like, uh, of like uh, goal-based challenges. Like yeah, I've totally. never been a fan of like lose X number of pounds and you're going to win $50,000. I've never been a fan of that. And and that kind of like felt to me like something like that, something. Gotcha. Because we call it a challenge. We gotcha. call it a challenge in January sense. where the rest of the world is trying to lose. 30 day. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm like, what is this? And, and uh, but, I, but I joined. I joined because I, I was like, I'm, I'm going to do it. I always, mm-hmm. whatever I decide to do, I do it 100%. Mm-hmm. I don't do it less than that. So I thought I'll join. I joined and I took, uh, and I'm taking personal coaching with Coach Emily and Coach Raymond. Uh, and and I will tell you that I have really benefited from it. Mm-hmm. In the last, let's see, it's the second week of February now, two plus five, seven plus eight. In the last eight weeks, my total carb content has been less than 100 grams together. Mm-hmm. And almost 60 of those have come from eggs. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit more than common eggs. You know how eggs have trace carbs, yes. almost one gram of carbs? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't count. No, it doesn't count. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, like, that, that's how, like, it's, how, it's, 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 it's been transformational. It's been so easy. Mm-hmm. And, and it's almost... I almost want to quit my job and I want to just tell people, I want to take them the chart that shows the top nutrient foods, right? Yes. And where everything else falls. And like, okay, I used to eat a big bag of kale. Trust me, you don't want to eat that. I will eat the bag of kale. You try this instead. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. So talk to us about some of the changes since you've been all in carnivore this time, since you've been in the community, you've grabbed that coaching support, yeah. you know, yeah. you've, you've really been able to like this, this was a lot longer stint than what do we do liver and something for a month. And we did, we did, we did that liver and sauerkraut for a month. Uh, yeah. OMAD. This, this is just carnivory, just carnivory. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, and I, I did pretty serious carnivory. So no sweeteners. No, because uh, I was super insulin resistant. No matter how much I ate, that wasn't there before with keto. With keto, when I was seriously like losing weight, I could tell at the exact bite when I picked up my spoon that I was full and I could mm. put my spoon back. Mm-hmm. So my insulin res- resistance had corrected itself and my hunger cues, my satiety cues were on spot. Mm. So I knew that feeling mm-hmm. from my past. You bet. I, I, I knew what that was. And I knew I had lost it with just like stuffing myself with all quote unquote. Oh yeah, it's this is what happens. You t- you tell yourself, and this is believe me, this is a fat man's uh, world. I'll tell you exactly what it is. You tell yourself that because cheesecake has cream cheese, it's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and after two cheesecakes, you're like, it's really not good for me. Right. Yeah. It, it's it is and you tell yourself oh it's totally fine making an almond flour uh whatever oh and i know you, you eat the whole thing and you don't even yes. realize what you've done to your body no so, satiety there's no satiety yeah. in those foods there's no satiety they, in they those foods. don't have yeah. the correctly balanced amino acids they don't have meat and so yeah. the they just go down so easy i was such a sucker to keto treats and almond flour yeah. everything and there's yeah. no end to it you, you don't yeah. get a chance to to shut it down Let's not forget about the fat bombs. Mm. They used to do fat bomb Fridays and just make a ton of fat bombs. Mm -hmm. I didn't trust those right in the beginning. I said, that's not right. (laughs) (laughs) She knew. She knew. (laughs) I I, I do think a lot depends on the the macro environment around you, uh, Adek, because I, 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 I guarantee you that if most of us lived in Europe, surrounded by how you are, Right, mm-hmm. we wouldn't be stuck in this cycle of uh, cycle of malnutrition. We wouldn't, mm. because the access you have, and the and the science you have is a lot more different. Yes. I know it's still hard, and I, I know it's still there's a lot of battles to be fought still in Europe. I get that in terms mm-hmm. of nutrition, but but people don't like scoff at people wanting to have raw milk. They say raw milk is better. They'll say raw cream is better. You know, they talk about yes. saturated fat being good. I had a French roommate when I was getting my MBA here. She'd say, eat more butter. It's good for you. In her oh, French accent, while smoking yeah, yeah. a cigarette, she'd say that. <laughs> I love it. So, oh, my gosh. 
<laughs> so, yeah. so, so. But the thing is, it's strange though that the carnival diet is actually just started. They've just uh, found out how about Paul Saladino. So it's, uh, it's, it's uh oh, really yeah, skin stage. So it's, um, it is quite yeah. exciting though. But, but uh, yeah, we are quite. We know more <laughs> in this group. Yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. and 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 I and I would even like change that to say we know less, because mm-hmm. it's it's good for you to know more, right? I'm happy for you, but it doesn't help us, right? So <laughs> for us, it it mm-hmm. sucks that we know less, and we know less as an intentional choice of companies that are feeding us that kind of food. Mm-hmm. It's not because we know less because we're dumber or any any less. No, uh, programmed. This is programmed. Anything. It's what we are fed continuously mm-hmm. around us. It's what we are told. What we are, it's what we're told, mm-hmm. and it's constant. Yeah, which is why the community is so important. Why building those relationships, and because we are in opposite worlds, so it's so yeah. important for us to to get to know. Hey, we're just regular people living our regular lives. We're not, you know, we're not whatever this Instagram something pr- proposes or whatever. I think that the Zoom meetings are so leveling and they're so human. Yeah. And that Bella's created something amazing. We're here. We just oh, have yeah. all these humans that connect. And so, uh, and, I, and I think that we can see that the more that we kind of show up and participate in those Zooms, the more that we can feel like this is not some persona or whatever. This is just real people having absolute healing in their lives. Um, yeah. And so I just, I just love it. I wanted to hear how your relationship with food has changed for you lately. Uh, it's, it's, it's changed in, in many ways, mm. most of them emotional. Mm. Uh, so emotionally food isn't a crutch anymore mm-hmm. for me. That's that's very important for me because because I, this is this is this is hard for me because it's not every not everybody will understand this right so people in our community will understand this but not a lot mm-hmm. of people will understand this so food doesn't have to look nice mm. doesn't have to smell nice doesn't have to <laughs> taste nice mm-hmm. none of those things are necessary these senses were given to us the sense of taste the sense of nose the 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 smell were given to us to avoid eating bad meat mm. or to avoid drinking bad water to avoid uh, eating a bad fruit as a safety or to, sm- or to smell danger it was for safety it was never for like oh, i'm going to i'm going to grade which meat is better and eat that it was never mm. that so so if you don't have any taste or if you don't have any smell eat it oh. right that's so, how neutral it is for you that's that's, that's how, how neutral it is yeah yeah <laughs> So I, I used to go to seven hundred uh, seven hundred dollar for a couple uh, for an evening kind of restaurants. Oh. I used to get my meat like <laughs> cooked, blah blah blah, this that. Uh, everything was sous vide, and I've gone mm-hmm. from like that, like uh, I'm just gonna go seven dollar steak, uh, yeah. put it on the pan for like fifteen seconds each, cut it on a plate, eat it with my hand because I I like eating with my hand. I'll cut it up with the fork and knife, but I'll eat it with a with my hand. Yeah. So that that connection of celebration and food is gone, mm. and and there is a very clear connection now. Physically speaking, food is not a time filler. It doesn't fill up some mm. time, so it doesn't take up time from twelve o'clock in the afternoon to one o'clock. And it's not a slot. It's not something you have to do because your favorite show is on. It's not something you have to do because your son's birthday. Food isn't that anymore. Food is mm. just nutrition. It's only mm. nutrition. It's only sustaining and thriving on this planet for the few years we have on this planet. Mm-hmm. That's my connection with food now. Yeah, I love that. I love that mindset. Yes. <laughs> so tell us about um, Adek wanted to hear more about your journey into raw carnivore. Yes. Very uh, yeah. Tell us I've, what I've, got you started there. Okay. This you you will uh, you will find this interesting. I think I don't hmm. know her. It's, the story starts with her. I don't know her. It was an article I even I recently sent it to uh, Coach M and Coach Ray. It was an article that was such a bias study. Hmm. It was talking about how uh, it says processed meat is very dangerous, mm-hmm. right? And it says therefore don't eat meat. Okay. Oh. Right. So okay. it's very it's a right. very tricky way yeah, of like, saying it. Yeah, it's 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 like saying uh, 
crime happens at night, so yes. nights are dangerous. Yeah. Oh, no. that's, 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 that's what they always do. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. yeah. So, so uh, it, it was on CNN. It was a very. Uh, yeah. what, what I'm saying is, it was very. It was peer reviewed. In the world of science, if something is peer reviewed, that means it's very good, and it's been there for 30 years. It's a, it's a longitudinal study, so it's been done across multiple countries, multiple geographies, and they all came to the conclusion that red wine is uh, is not that good for you. Mm. You agree? right? It's, it's not good for you. Not the way it's made, right? Uh, red wine, the way it was made before, the way it was, there was no, there was, you just had it right away. You made it in your, in most Eastern European Baltic countries, there are still old grandmas making red wine in a pot in the back right. <laughs> from, the, from their own farm's grapes or their neighbor's farm's grapes, right? That's a different thing entirely. So this study that I was talking about, it said red wine is bad and it also said processed meat is bad, so avoid taking red meat. And I quickly caught that false equivalency between red meat and processed meat. And I went quickly and cross-checked that information with Sverige. Sverige, mm. S-V-E-R-I-G-E. Mm. He's a, he has a channel on uh, YouTube, Sverige. Mm. And he's also, he has, also has another channel called, he's called Gotis, G-O-A-T-I-S. Mm. He's a he's a he's a he's a completely raw carnivore. He oh, uh, he, he okay. eats some fruit. Uh, Sverige is is actually philosophically. I I'm okay with some of his things, uh, but I understand what he's saying. He's saying that if it is in nature, eat it. If it is not in nature, don't eat it. That's sure. what he says, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and he says yeah. this is what your body is meant to do. He has a very good point. He says everybody in this world is a raw carnivore they just don't know it so okay. the reason is your body is eating itself to make up for any deficits in your diet i love it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's absolutely true it's 100 mm -hmm. true you don't think of it that way yeah right. our body That's like leaches, leaches all the non-essential amino acids mm -hmm. if we don't get what we don't get we don't need to add salt it's a rock your body will use what is already in there right it, 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 was, it was such a liberating thought for me, understanding that, yeah, duh. So, and, and he says, he said the same thing. He said, don't cook your meat. It's carcinogenic. Mm -hmm. you're, you're adding carcinogens. You're, yeah, you'll get some nutrients, but you're losing a lot of the water-soluble nutrients. So I did my own research then. Apparently, meat has two kinds of nutrients, water-soluble and fat-soluble. Mm -hmm. And you lose a lot of the water-soluble nutrients by 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 cooking it by cooking meat mm. you still get the nutrients from uh, from from consuming fat with it because they are fat soluble mm -hmm. but when the raw meat goes into your belly it it pulls in water from the body and digests it but that water takes away the nutrients hence water soluble nutrients and mm. feeds you and nourishes you so you don't need a lot of raw meat to feel satiated because it's it's highly nutrient dense you're getting water soluble and fat soluble nutrients so i i realized then that cooking things was maybe not the optimal thing for me in the past i had used raw meat without knowing it or i shouldn't say raw meat i'd used raw carnivore without knowing it one trick i used to get rid of coffee about three or four years ago was was i wanted that hit in the morning of energy so i had raw egg yolks because they had a very high content of choline and a bunch of other things yeah. like a superfood, right? It's it's a real, a true superfood. I had two or three of those and I was like, what? This is, coffee can go, you know? Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, so much better having egg yolks. So then I realized like raw, raw food is really good. Raw food is really good in general, but the raw food that is, that is nutrient and not anti-nutrient, which is plants, is, is what's necessary. And then I had one last thing is luckily, I always look at any research that comes to me with my understanding of the world and my understanding of the science. I think everybody has it. It's just that we have to educate ourselves continuously though. Mm -hmm. We can't we can't stay the way we, we can't stay where we are and not read a book or not learn something and expect everything will come to us. It doesn't work like mm -hmm. that. Right. We have to do the work. We have That's to right. do the work. We have to go to the library. We have to open up some journal somewhere. Once we read it, then we can claim that we know more than doctors because we know more about our body 
than any doctor on the planet, right? Mm-hmm. But to have a good sense of that and not an egotistical sense of that, we have to do a lot of research also. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. So not just saying I know better than other people. Totally. Uh, but actually doing the work. And then you can say that. You can absolutely claim that. <laughs> so one thing that I did was I asked myself, what is the purpose of fruit? What is the purpose of plant? Mm-hmm. And what is the purpose of meat, the, the food chain and everything that we know, that we were taught in school and everything. I realized very quickly that fruit is meant to be eaten. Gotcha. Fruit it is- wants to be eaten. It, it in, wants in to its, be- but it's not anywhere near its natural form, of course. A fruit is meant as reproduction for a plant. Mm-hmm. You eat that and you throw the seed out and the seed grows into a new tree. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the purpose of fruit. Mm-hmm. That's why fruits have seeds. Or you coop it out, little seeds, and that's the purpose. Mm-hmm. In nature, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, if the fruit yeah. was bitter, why are we incentivized to eat it? That's why there's sugar in there. Mm-hmm. So, so nature gives pleasure free of cost as a way to entice us Mm-hmm. to ensure reproduction happens mm-hmm. that's how i knew that okay fruit is great it won't have anything bad in it but it's not for me right now there you go it's not for me yeah. i realized that very quickly and and plants vegetables no way because yeah. they are not meant to eat their purpose isn't they don't for, want to be eat eaten. me mm-hmm. eat me therefore you can therefore you can create more of me that's not their their thing at all mm-hmm. they they want their leaves to go stronger they want to grow more flowers so that they can attract bees for pollination they can attract human beings to pluck the fruit and eat it and then pollinate that that way that's what they want mm-hmm. so so yeah I could, yeah go ahead. i think we're, well i just think where we where where i what i hear about that a lot too is that today's fruit is not the fruit but it's not our ancestral fruit but because it's yeah. been so messed around with so yeah. when we even say fruit we have to say well what are we calling fruit yeah. You know, just because that the apples from way back when would have been like super, super tiny and, yeah. and would have had so much sugar, yeah. probably some yeah. sugar, they would have been yeah. really tart. Yeah. And yeah. so that's where I think like, as we're trying to navigate our, our local grocery store, then yeah. we have to think, we have to look at that and we go, that actually, it kind of comes back to what is processed food. And yeah. so how did that apple get to look like that over the last couple hundred years? Like what way and why, how, why does it taste like that? Why is it that big? You know? And so that mm-hmm. has all the genetics have all been really messed with. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. the only other thing to, to think about, you know, just, just on that, that frame. Why do you feel that fruit is not for you right now? Mm-hmm. I choose not to mess with it too much because I don't know how to fight insulin mm-hmm. with my body. Gotcha. So, so what I do is I am going to stay away from it. Insulin yep. is going to have insulin is going to have a very zero minimal presence in my life because mm-hmm. I'm going to eat heavy fatty cuts of meat. I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat very clean. I'm not going to have sugar or anything resembling sugar, even if it is fructose. I'm not going to have that. Now, in some point in life, I might add fruits. Big, big disclaimer. And I think you should not edit this out, Coach Cherish. (laughs) Big disclaimer is, this is how messed up we are as a society. Mm -hmm. That when we think of fruit, the first examples we think of are luscious berries Mm -hmm. with apples. This is marketing. Mm -hmm. The fruits I'm talking about are avocado, which is a fruit. Olives, maybe. Mm -hmm. Capers, which is a fruit. Mm -hmm. You're right. Olives, which Mm -hmm. is a fruit. Tomatoes. maybe tomatoes <laughs> that's it that's the fruit it, kind of insulin about. friendly maybe for, for not that even, not know, even if, that's, just, down yeah. the road or, mm-hmm. those are the fruits that i think for me are mm-hmm. maybe okay in a year from now sure interesting oh my goodness yeah. well it's fun you have to figure that out when you're in this yeah. you, that is part of the process like as much as we know like well, just focus on the day you're in and just take the step you're in and just learn the whatever you're in. Um, but part of you is always going to think like, well, yeah, but what's this going to be like? How is this really going to be like? And so I think that that's really good to just to try to, you know, give that a little bit of attention. Yeah. And then, then we kind of do have to bring it right back to the here and know what am I experiencing right now? And have I experienced up to this point that I know what the right steps are for me right now? So I think that's fascinating. I love it. Yeah, I'm curious, John, when you buy your raw, are you buying it from a farmer or are you buying it from the local grocery store? Where do you source your meat from? Great question. I haven't even started sourcing it yet. I only started this morning. I had a a big hunk of meat that I already bought to smoke. 
<laughs> a big hunk of beef. So I just took out about an, a half inch on all, all sides. Mm-hmm. And what was left, I knew you would be safe because there's no bacterial interaction. Sure. Mm-hmm. So that's what I had today. I love so it. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of continue that. I'll cook out the parts that I took out that were in contact. I'll cook those maybe. Mm-hmm. But uh, in terms of suet, in terms of tallow, I have uh, I have a local, not local, where I work, uh, I have an Amish uh, butcher oh, okay. that, that looks at me crazy when I go and ask him, can you give me some beef art? Yes. He looks at me. He looks at me like, I, aren't you supposed to be Indian now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Keep that way. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. The question, I'm sorry. Like To answer your question, I do think that I have to figure out a source that I can reliably, uh, safely eat. Mm-hmm. I think safety is also way overblown. I'll be honest. I think mm. I, think I, 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 I refuse to believe that that there is some bacteria on the surface of meat that is more dangerous than anything that comes out of a cardboard box. <laughs> I refuse to believe that. Right. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Look at it. Yeah. yeah. And Did now you enjoy I've, it, John? Did yeah. you enjoy eating it? I, I enjoyed eating it. I, I had it with, uh, to be completely honest, I had it with, uh, I had a piece by myself, by, by itself. Uh-huh. It tasted exactly like, like steak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I eat my I eat my steak pretty raw anyway. I just yeah. see the see the see, the, see the outsides. Uh, for the Maillard reaction, I like that. I like the Maillard reaction. I like how it feels. You know, when the when the yeah. fat like melts onto itself. Mm. But I still keep it pretty rare. Uh, steak exactly a raw steak tastes exactly like steak. It's not. It's no different. <laughs> Did you it, salt it or sal- anything? No salt. No, no. Oh, uh, so I didn't salt it. But to to enable it the first time, I did use some mustard, but oh, mustard gotcha. without any turmeric or anything. So it was grape upon mustard mm-hmm. that, that doesn't have a lot of like uh, additives. There's some white wine in it, but I, I don't care. It's so little. So it helped me to eat a little bit more, but mm-hmm. I can start seeing how I want to incorporate egg yolks into it. A little bit of maybe salt, maybe not. I can start seeing how I, I want to do more of that. I think there's a lot of creativity that, that uh, oh, quick, quick tangent. I think an essential skill to have for a, for a successful carnivore is you have to get comfortable in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Of course, you it's your source. In the kitchen. It's your yeah, source, it's, yeah. Yes, you can't, you can't depend on going to restaurants because one, it'll get you bankrupt. Mm-hmm. And two, it is, there is no point going and ordering a nice 16 ounce ribeye somewhere and paying 50 bucks for it when they cook it in corn oil. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or margarine. You, 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 can, you can't control it. You can't control mm-hmm. it. They're not trying to kill you. The chefs and everybody inside, they're not trying to kill you. They're not doing yeah. that on purpose. <laughs> they don't even know. Their mm-hmm. mise en place and everything, the way they set up their, uh, their, their, uh, their restaurant, they just yeah. have oil ready to go. Yeah. Or, or butter ready to go. Their butters are actually LBAs, liquid butter alternatives. They're even called <laughs> liquid butter alternatives. You can just they'll take, take that and put that in. So yeah, it's, it's a that... waste of like, oh, it's actually harmful for you to go to restaurants. It is. You're paying yeah. somebody else to cause you harm. To cause you harm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And very quickly, you will realize that taste is irrelevant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just hearing this freedom through restriction is kind of what I'm hearing. I'm hearing yeah. this narrow path this by keeping things so simple and so focused yeah. then you actually are like opening yourself up wide to like uh, possibilities that you really didn't know were there <laughs> it's a narrow path to freedom yeah i love it nice yeah mm-hmm. very nice i heard the joy question who asked it yes i did All right, okay, I okay. what brings john joy the the things that i used to find gave me joy mm-hmm. were all fake they don't they don't give me joy anymore they were just totally. emotional stop gaps they were just yes. ways of dealing with my terrible hormonal imbalances, yeah, right? I and agree. when I say my terrible hormonal imbalances, I don't want your audience to think that they don't have that. Yeah, no kidding. Everybody on earth is going through it. We have messed our food chain, our supply chains so badly, right? That we don't know what we're doing to ourselves. We don't, mm-hmm. right? Just because I'm eating raw carnivore doesn't mean I know what I'm doing to myself. 10 years from now, that may be the bad thing, right? But what I do know is I'm not putting anything into my body that is masking how I feel. No dairy, no sugar, no crap, no grains. So I'm not putting anything into my body that is keeping my eyes closed anymore to what is going on around me, right? So so for me, meat is meat is not, it's it's not that meat did all this for me. It's eliminating everything else 
yes. that left me with meat. The only okay. safe option. Like that. Right? So, mm -hmm. so I'm going to eat that only for what it is, which is uh, sustenance, health, mm -hmm. nutritional value, right? And energy for the day uh, and to get to an optimal place. If it means weight loss, great. If it doesn't mean weight loss, no big deal. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to look for a cut body or anything. I'm not trying to look a certain way or anything. I just want to feel good, right? So all of these artificial definitions of joy I had before, they are, they are, they're blown to smithereens. They don't, they don't exist. Anymore. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm going to enjoy that. Oh, eggnog is so nice. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm starting to see joy differently now. I'm starting mm. to see joy through, through calmness, through satisfaction, through having a nice day. Mm. through spending time in the sun mm. uh through through going to the grocery store and spending like five minutes in total right yes that is a good one yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just buy all for, the meat run yeah. out yeah. <laughs> and, and 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 honestly this is this can be an, uh, a non-scale victory as well but for me joy now comes in how much more how many fewer decisions i have to take every day on what brings joy what i want to do honestly i did not at 41 years old i did not know what i wanted to do it was always like i want to do that i want to do this i want to do that the reality is it's all fake for me because mm -hmm. it's all hormonally induced i want to do something mm -hmm. because that's what my hormones were telling me to do mm -hmm. i got to figure out what john wants john to do now oh so so mm -hmm. i'm not there yet that version of me is not ready yet it's still uh to borrow coach emily's phrase it's still that snow is still melting right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, so once, once I chip away everything and then I, I feel at more optimal health, I think, I think it'll come to me. What brings me joy? Yeah. I feel like, I feel like I just hear you on this journey of becoming yourself. That's just what I'm hearing. It's just that's phenomenal. That's exactly what Carnivory has done. That's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. But it is a gift to just, you know, enjoy a day. It is, it sound, may sound too simple, but it's yes. precious. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a wonderful thing. What is so wrong in enjoying the day? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Presence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a wonderful thing. I, 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 I've I always had some of these uh, concepts in me. Philosophically, mm -hmm. I'm more Eastern, uh, Asian. Like philosophically, I'm very uh, not, I don't spend too much money shopping. I don't like, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't gravitate towards retail therapy as much. Uh, I'm more within myself. Yep. But knowing that within myself, I'm not now, now I'm not, but inside my hormones were ruling me. They're not anymore mm -hmm. as much. They still mm -hmm. have some ways and places that I got to figure out. But I absolutely feel more control of my life, which does give me joy. Mm -hmm. Waking up before an alarm that I set for myself mm -hmm. is joy. Mm -hmm. And waking up not groggy, mm -hmm. driving the car to work falling asleep at the wheel maybe mm. and waking up because you're too close to hitting your car the car mm -hmm. in front of you that's joy mm. so so being in control of simple small things of your life is 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 awesome yeah yeah uh, ladies i think that's a perfect way to cap this particular video i could i could sit here and listen to john <laughs> all day long i mean when you very first spoke up in our meetings i was like this guy is awesome i'm sitting in the parking lot waiting for my kid to come out of practice i'm like this guy's amazing <laughs> yes. like, why hasn't he spoken before so i i'm sure the ladies agree with me i really appreciate you coming and sharing your story and your journey with us and i look forward to continuing hearing about your journey in our group I hope that you'll come back after you, you know, do your raw thing and learn more mm -hmm. things and come back and tell us all about it for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. So thank yeah. you so much for your time. Everybody don't forget, like subscribe and hit the notification button for more butter dish. Thanks ladies. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Thank you. Amazing. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you.